Hi, it's Future History, looking back at the 2020s from the 2120s. Here to talk about Xenobots today. Not to be confused with the Xenomorphs, the fictional but very scary aliens from the franchise called Aliens. Xenobots are an actual thing made by a team of scientists from three universities, Vermont University, Harvard University and Tufts University, all got together to make these creepy, cute little Pac-Man kind of things. They're made from frog skin stem cells, so they're named after the frog that gave them the cells, which was called a Xenopus livus. These frog cells can be zapped into action with some electrodes. They were made from, you know, regular cell stuff, but you can zap them up. And then depending on their shape, they will do different things. So one of the things that they can do is reproduce. They go around gobbling up little bits of cellular structure. And then after a few days, they pop out a new one of themselves. And that thing can then do the same gobble up more stuff, pop out more stuff. It's not the first self-replicating synthetic biological organism ever created, but it is a new one. <laughs> uh, and it's interesting because in the midterm, it can lead to programmable medicine, programmable biology, control of cells. You know, if you can tell them what to do, you could pr perhaps cure things like cancers that used to plague people in the 2020s. Um, of course, long done by my time in the 2120s. And then in the longer term, what you can do is create just basically an infinite amount of different kinds of things, biological, physical. You can blend the process of manufacturing and the process of birth. And in the longer term, that's one of the most interesting parts of this line of thinking uh, is the the sort of revelation that there's less of a distinction between the mechanical and the biological than we have hitherto in the back old and tiny 2020 days uh, expected as a sort of cultural norm. So um, one way for you to think about this is uh, beeswax so I, th I think a, a strong example like bees do create this artificial substance wax we consider it almost mechanical it's but you know it's it's a good it's a dry good um but it's created through a biological process they nibble up stuff they spit it out and um, so when you look at like the mechanical stuff you're surrounded with like your telephone the screen you're looking at this on, you might think, oh, that's very different than me, a biological squishy thing. Uh, this hard, gleamy, sharp thing is obviously from another world, but really it's not that different from beeswax. It's just more complicated. So it's, um, it's a bit of an illusion that we and the machines are sort of two sides of some fantasy coin. Actually, we're more like, you know, tree and leaf you know it, we're, we're connected more intuitively than uh, we have previously thought and that's something that comes quite natural in the 2120s because a lot of the dominant life forms derive from mechanical artificial processes they are constructed intelligences so they think of the mechanical world as more of their natural kind of birthplace uh, in the way that humans think of biology, like the forest or the ocean as their natural birthplace. Um, and so in the future, there's more combination of those two things, manufacturing and um, farming sort of tend to weave together a little bit more than they do in the olden timeys, adorable 2020s. Um, and the other deepish thing I think to ponder around this subject of xenobots or xenomorphs or xeno whatever you like to create is uh, the profundity of shape. Uh, I think the um, the the ways in which shape informs behavior are really interesting to sort of plumb uh, like in the case of the xenobots what shape they are determines how they'll behave and specifically whether they'll replicate so you can have lots of different shapes that don't gobble up cellular stuff and then pop out little future frogs um, but then there are a few shapes that do that so the way to bring that into your own life, or one way anyway, is to consider what kind of shapes your body and your mind has to take it to a sort of thinky, airy, fairy plane, and what kind of shapes you could cultivate that were, would allow you to open up 
a new world of possible behaviors for yourself in the future. Worth considering and um, pretty profound as it goes all the way back to the universe itself existing, what is the very fabric of reality made of. And when we ask questions like, is the universe fundamentally a good place? What we're really asking is, what is its shape on a primal level? So that's pretty profound. And if you'd like to learn more, you can look into any of these universities. Again, it's Vermont and Tufts and Harvard doing this work. And another place to look at is the Craig Venter Institute, which is also doing self-replicating synthetic biology. We'll check in on them in another future history. Hope you're having a lovely day and uh, enjoy pondering your connection to the mechanical and the biological and the possibilities enabled by your shape. Mm, love you and uh, see you soon bye